this car apparently, I mean, it's just psychopathic from what I understand, which to me sounds just perfect. So XJR15, they sold the race cars. They sold most of the road cars. They still had a bunch of tubs. And Tom Walkinshaw never won to leave one red cent on the table. They still, they still had a bunch of tubs and they had a bunch of race parts. So his head of sales is in Japan at a nightclub with the owner of the club who also happened to be an XJR15 road car uh, owner whose road car I've owned. They're there under the thick fog of sake and Japanese whiskey, pitched the idea to this gentleman who owned a number of nightclubs and arcades in Tokyo, which without stereotyping what owners of those establishments, they, they, they tend perhaps to not be viewed in the highest esteem by local law enforcement, shall we say. So... They're there. They need to raise a little bit more money. So over sake and whiskey, they cook up XJR 15 LM, which became an XJR 15 with the XJR 9's race motor shoved in the back. Now, obviously, it wasn't just as easy as sticking the motor in, though it wasn't that far off, even though if Walkinshaw had his druthers. He, if he could have, he would have happily just dropped the motor in and sent it out and would have been fine. But there were some pretty significant differences between the XJR15 road car and race cars motors and that of an XJR9 or XJR12, you know, 750 horsepower full, you know, full fledged race motor, starting with the fact that. The intakes on a XJR15 are the regular 5.3 HE intake manifolds off of any Jaguar V12. So they're effectively what you refer to as side drafts. So the, they, the, the runners go sideways, they cross over with one another, they sit on top of the motor, low profile, easy for packaging. XJR9, XJR12, any of the 12 cylinder XJR Jag race cars are all as a proper race car would downdraft. So big intake goes up from the center, air box in the roof, cool race car stuff. But we all get excited about big, you know, big 12 cylinder motor shouting over your head. What gets better than that? That presented a little bit of a packaging situation. So walking Shaw just made a big roof scoop and took out the window. Bam, roof scoop. Car needed Theoretically needed a little bit more downforce, developed a front lip for the car, put risers in the rear wing, and call it a day, sent all the cars off. They did a test, a single test. There are pictures of those cars at a test day at Silverstone. Other than that, those cars have basically never been driven. They all have very few miles on them. They're in the hands of the original owner. And... The the big the big question mark is I mean these cars haven't been run I mean the better the better part of thirty years I've never driven one and I've got to imagine and from what I've been told by TWR employees at the time who were involved in the project is that these things are because I mean a regular XJR fifteen it is very fast it is very visceral. But it's tractable. It is It is not something that's just trying to rip your head off at every possible juncture. If, if you're if you're not a ham-fisted idiot. If, if you're a ham-fisted idiot, you are going to get in trouble with an extra air 15. But if you treat it with a modicum of respect, you'll be fine. This car apparently, I mean, it's just psychopathic from what I understand, which to me sounds just perfect. 750 horsepower screaming out over top of your head. Only run it on race gas. Perfect. The more compromised, the more ridiculous, the better. I, I love the idea of it. I don't, I have no idea how it drives. I'm sure it is very difficult to drive and I don't care. 
That being said, I actually think that the styling of a regular XJ R15 is more pure than that of the LMs. I think that the you know the the big the big roof scoop and the chin spoiler and the wing. I don't want to say that it ruins it. It takes what is otherwise you know Peter Stevens just having carte blanche from Tom Walkinshaw. I mean, actually, funny story Peter told me was I mean when when he he was hired by Tom to design the car, he comes in with a number you know with, with a whole bunch a whole bunch of sketches and drawings and you know wants to sit down with Tom to work on designing the car and Tom who was generally very very focused and very short peter sits down and says you know we really you know, really appreciate these oppor- this opportunity here is you know here are some concepts and tom just looks up at him and says you're the designer you figure it out and dismisses him and peter said that was that was you know one of the greatest gifts that he was given was basically having carte blanche to do the car as he saw fit that was the way that tom was he was he was very direct. He hired people who he knew were the best at what they did, and he let them do what they did, and he didn't get in their way as long as they were performing. So I, I think that the original XJR15 design is super pure, really elemental. It's elegant. It's not. It's not a crazy garish thing. Uh, the XJR15 LM is has a bunch of stuff tacked on it, but when you have a 750 horsepower Le Mans winning 12 cylinder screaming behind your head. How bad could it really be? XJR 15 LM, you know, you only have five cars produced. Even though they haven't really done anything, the fact that they've been in the same owner's hands for so long and there there is such such pedigree and just such a compelling story behind them. I think it's really safe to say that if one of those cars were to transact, that it would be worth double what a normal XJR15 road or race car would transact for. I think that in order to, that that effectively valuing one of those cars, $5 million plus all day long. That's, that's, that's what it would take. If, if I, if I were selling one, I wouldn't take a penny less. We'd like to thank Glossit for supporting the VinWiki channel this month. And right now, Glossit is offering the best DIY ceramic coating package that we've ever seen or certainly offered here on VinWiki. For just $69.99, you're going to get their graphene ceramic coating along with the Real Difference Maker, their ceramic detail spray. Now, that's a $50 bottle of spray detailer that I truly love just for daily use. But when you use that alongside their graphene ceramic coating, it makes the removal a lot easier, the outcome a lot smoother, you avoid high spots and things like that. So a DIY idiot like me in my own garage can achieve an outcome pretty similar to what Rich and his team were able to do last year on the Paris Hilton SLR, which I eventually torture tested on rallies and road trips and all this stuff. And it is now in Bulgaria still looking wonderful. So check it out now at the link in the description below. There's a very limited quantity. So respond now and get yours for just $69.99. Thanks, Glossett.